Hi there, Mr. Secretary and Secretary General. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, Mr. Secretary, you, you started the press conference uh, speaking about the tragic earthquake in Turkey and Syria. And actually, that's my, my question is relevant to that. Um, specifically, uh, as you know, there's uh, one border crossing in the northwest of Syria, which is damaged by the earthquake, and there are no other crossings. And so, obviously, it's going to be difficult to, to get the aid mm -hmm. there. Uh, and you also said that uh, you were adamant saying that uh, all USA would go through N local NGOs, mm -hmm. um, US funded local mm -hmm. NGOs. And so my question is this, is I was wondering if the administration has had any contact at any level with the Syrian government, and if there were a request through the Syrian government, would the US and the administration accede to that request to coordinate aid for the <coughs> Syrian people? And uh, a question from the Secretary General, um, since Turkey is obviously a, a NATO member. Um, could you provide us some detail on what NATO is actually doing uh, to help uh, the recovery efforts in uh, Turkey? And also, tragically, um, uh, would this tragedy in any way uh, help to ease tensions with uh, Turkey uh, on the relevant issues that you mentioned uh, on your agenda? Thank you very okay. much. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, with regard to Syria, I'm not aware of any contacts between the uh, United States government and the Syrian government in, uh, in recent days um, since the, the earthquake. Um, but here's what, um, here's what we've been doing. If you go back to 2011, we provided more than $15 billion in assistance to the Syrian people through uh, NGO partners, international NGO partners, partners on the ground in Syria. Um, we're a leading provider of uh, humanitarian assistance to Syria, to the Syrian people, not uh, to the government. And working through these partners, um, we've tried to make sure that the assistance gets to uh, where it's needed. And that's the people who are uh, affected by the horrific uh, war that uh, Assad has waged on his own people since 2011. And now, in the case of the earthquake, to people affected uh, by the earthquake. Uh, you're exactly right that uh, there is one crossing that um, allows assistance to get into Syria from the, from the outside, and that was disrupted by the earthquake. It's exactly why we have been fighting every single year, not only to preserve that crossing, uh, at the, it's authorized, as you know, by the United Nations, but to get additional ones uh, so that if a crossing was taken out of action, uh, there would be uh, other places that people could get humanitarian assistance in. And of course, year after year, uh, Russia has sought to block those crossings or to limit them. And that only compounds the tragedy that people in Syria are now experiencing. Just a couple of hours after the earthquake, uh, we sent out uh, a call uh, from the NATO headquarters to all NATO allies uh, to provide uh, immediate uh, support uh, to help uh, uh, Turkey with uh, uh, the consequences of the devastating earthquake. And, uh, uh, I welcome that um, allies have stepped up uh, and are now providing different types of uh, support. Uh, of course, the U.S., as Secretary Blinken mentioned, has already provided a lot of support, but also other allies are uh, stepping up, uh, and, uh, and that's the continued message from, uh, from NATO, is that uh, uh, we should support uh, Turkey, uh, a valued and important NATO ally, where we see uh, human suffering and, uh, and the devastating consequences of uh, the uh, earthquake. Uh, and of course, allies have also expressed their deepest uh, condolences, um, and uh, um, it is uh, uh, heartbreaking to see uh, all the suffering, but also uh, uh, to see how uh, people and allies are now stepping up to provide as much help as possible. Tova Virogas, NRK. Question for uh, Secretary Blinken. Uh, how important is it for the Biden administration that Sweden is also allo allowed to join NATO, not just Finland? And what is the U.S. doing to solve this, this argument with Erdogan and Turkey? What, how can the U.S. influence uh, that Turkey changes its position? Thank you. Uh, well, first, this is not a bilateral issue between the United States and any other uh, country. Um, this is a, an alliance matter, and our view uh, is, is very clear. Both Finland and Sweden uh, are ready to be NATO allies, uh, and the alliance should welcome them uh, as quickly as possible. Um, their militaries already work seamlessly with, uh, with alliance forces. 
as I said earlier, they're strong, vibrant democracies. Uh, we're confident that NATO will formally uh, welcome both countries and that that will happen soon. Uh, and this will, in turn, enhance security across the entire Euro-Atlantic region. Um, as this process continues, we are fully committed to Finland and Sweden's accession uh, to the alliance. Um, and again, I think you can see the strength of that support across uh, the alliance. Nearly all countries took swift action. Uh, our Senate overwhelmingly and on a bipartisan basis voted for their membership. And the time is right uh, now to finalize that accession process and to welcome as full members uh, of NATO. Uh, we support the uh, work that um, both countries have been doing with Turkey to address legitimate concerns that Turkey has brought to the table uh, about its security. Uh, there is an ongoing process there, but as you know, uh, both countries, Finland and Sweden, took significant steps to address concerns that uh, the Turkey raised. They made commitments under uh, a memorandum of agreement that was signed in Madrid, uh, and uh, they are making good on, um, uh, on the commitments that they've made. Uh, again, we acknowledge uh, Turkey's longtime security concerns. We appreciate the tangible actions that both countries, Finland and Sweden, have taken uh, to address them. Nick Schifrin of PBS. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Forgive me, two questions uh, for you, and then I'll turn to the Secretary General. Uh, that today, the British Prime Minister uh, announced that the UK would uh, provide uh, fighter jet training, Western fighter jet training, uh, to Ukrainian pilots and would examine the possibility of providing Western jets to Ukraine. Why does the U.S. continue to oppose uh, a step that the British government uh, now believes would be helpful to Ukraine long term? Uh, and on the balloon, you've described now the network uh, of uh, aerial surveillance conducted by uh, China uh, in five continents. Uh, do you believe that that uh, network is run by the PLA Air Force, and do you believe Xi Jinping himself was aware of the balloon last week. Uh, and Mr. Secretary General, uh, U.S. officials have described uh, that Chinese surveillance balloons uh, have flown over uh, at least one European country. Uh, is that something that NATO is aware of uh, and are you concerned about? Thank you. Um, thanks very much. So uh, first of all, with regard to uh, the balloon, uh, we will have more to say about that in the, uh, in the days ahead. We are getting more information uh, almost by the hour as we continue to work uh, to salvage the balloon. We're learning uh, from that. Uh, and as well, uh, we're learning from um, uh, what uh, we saw and picked up as the balloon traversed uh, the, uh, the United States. Uh, as to who's responsible for that, <laughs> um, China is. And it doesn't matter uh, on one level which individuals may or may not have been, um, have been responsible. The fact is, China engaged uh, in this irresponsible action, a violation of our, our sovereignty and territorial integrity uh, and um, uh, international law. And as we've noted as well, uh, we're not alone in this. Uh, countries across five continents have also had surveillance balloons overfly uh, their territory, which is why we're sharing this information with others. We continue to look to China to act responsibly uh, and uh, as well to, to, to help us in managing this relationship responsibly. That's what we continue uh, to look for. Um, and I'm sorry, the first part of your question? Uh, oh, the fighter jets. Um, as we've said throughout this process, at every single turn we will, working very closely with the Ukrainians, uh, as well as working with other uh, partners and allies, um, work to make sure that Ukraine has what it needs, when it needs it to effectively defend itself, and to continue to take back the territory that's been seized from it by Russian forces. As the nature of the, uh, of the conflict, uh, the aggression has evolved, so too is the support that we provided. Uh, and what we did initially, in fact, before the Russian aggression uh, itself, as we, saw, as we saw it coming, and wanted to make sure that Ukraine had in its hands what it would need to defend itself, uh, we did these very significant drawdowns um, a year, you know, in, um, more than, well, more than a year ago, a year and a half ago, back uh, in September before the aggression, uh, Christmas before the aggression, and as a result, they had things like stingers and javelins on hand when Russia went at Kyiv, and they were able to repel the attack and, and, and push it back. At every step along the way, uh, as needs have evolved, so too has what we have provided uh, Ukraine, and that uh, most recently, um, 
took place with the uh, decision to provide the Abrams tanks and, of course, Germany providing uh, the Leopard tanks and other Europeans doing the same. We've also been very clear all along that what's vital is not just a particular weapon system, a piece of equipment. Equally important is the ability of Ukrainians to use it effectively, and that requires, in some cases, significant training. Uh, equally important is the ability to maintain it. And then finally, all of that has to be brought together in an actually, uh, in, a, in, a, in a coherent uh, strategy. All of those elements are important. It's a long way of saying this, this is an evolving uh, process, and we will continue to make uh, judgments about what we think Ukraine needs and what uh, it can be most effective uh, in using. We'll do that in very close consultation with the Ukrainians and, of course, in consultation with our partners. The Chinese uh, balloon over uh, the United States uh, confirms a pattern of Chinese behavior, where we see that uh, China over the last years has invested heavily in new uh, military capabilities, including uh, different types of uh, uh, surveillance and intelligence uh, platforms. And uh, uh, we have also seen um, increased Chinese intelligence activities uh, in Europe. Uh, again, different platforms. Um, um, they use uh, satellites, uh, they, they, they use cyber, uh, 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 and as we've seen over the United States, uh, also balloons. So, so we just have to be vigilant. We need to be aware of uh, the constant risk of uh, Chinese intelligence and uh, uh, then step up what we do to protect uh, ourselves. Uh, uh, and we need uh, also to react in a, uh, in a prudent, uh, uh, responsible and vigilant way, as we have seen and the United States uh, has reacted to this uh, specific uh, balloon over uh, North America and uh, the United States. Um, I think it also highlights that uh, security is not regional. Security is global. Uh, what happens in Asia matters for Europe, and what happens in uh, Europe matters for Asia, uh, and, uh, and also, of course, for North America. This was a message that was very much confirmed during my visit to Japan and South Korea, uh, East Asia, last week, uh, where uh, uh, those close partners of, uh, of NATO very much highlighted the importance of uh, strengthening the cooperation between NATO uh, uh, and, uh, and our partners in, in, in uh, the Indo-Pacific uh, to address the challenges that uh, uh, China um, poses to our security, to our values and, uh, and to our interests. And I think that this, uh, the balloon over North America just confirms that pattern. Let's take a final question from Karen Erickson of ND. Thank you very much. So um, back to Turkey then, because Turkey is now sending the signal that it might accept Finland but not Sweden into NATO, separating the processes. I wanted to ask you both, to what extent do you see this as a possible or viable path forward? Thank you. First of all, I think we have to remember that all allies, uh, also Turkey, made uh, an historic decision in July last year when all allies at the NATO summit in Madrid uh, invited both Finland and Sweden to become members of the alliance. Then all allies, all 30 allies, uh, signed the accession protocols and so far uh, already 28 out of 30 allies have ratified the accession protocols. Uh, these are historic decisions, um, uh, and uh, so far this has been uh, uh, one of the quickest uh, uh, accession processes in NATO's uh, history, uh, uh, the quickest in NATO's modern history, uh, because we have to remember that Finland and Sweden applied in May last year, and only in July they were invited, and, and, uh, and now 28 out of 30 uh, ha have uh, ratified the, uh, the, the protocols. They applied together, uh, they were invited together, um, and, uh, and, and, and 28 allies have already signed uh, both uh, protocols. Um, I think it's important that we uh, uh, recognize the, uh, the importance both for Finland and Sweden, but also for, for the whole alliance, uh, that uh, they become a member, uh, became, that they will become members as, as, as quickly as possible. Um, as part of the decision in, um, in, uh, in Madrid, uh, Finland, Sweden and uh, Turkey signed a joint memorandum um, on how to step up cooperation, uh, not least uh, in the fight against terrorism. Uh, Finland and Sweden uh, have uh, delivered on their commitments under that uh, memorandum. I also uh, expressed that view in my meetings with the Turkish leadership. Uh, so I'm confident that uh, both will become a member, but I'm not uh, 
ready to go into exactly when that will happen. Um, what he said. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.